What's going on there, YouTube, and welcome back to another comic book video. Okay, we are going to jump back into our coverage over X-Men comics that lead into the Fall of the Mutant story arc, the second crossover for the X-Men. This time, we pick up with X-Factor issues number 22, 23, and 24. And this is going to be our last video before we dive into that particular story arc. Before we dive into today's video, I do want to mention that down below in the description, I have the playlist linked in there just in case you want to go back and watch the videos before this one to get a better understanding of what is happening before diving into the big event. Matter of fact, each crossover we do is going to have a playlist of their own to keep things nicely organized. So for example, there's a playlist playlist for the mutant massacre as well and so getting into today's video we do pick up with x-factor being confronted by cameron hodge their pr person for their group now remember when it came to x-factor it was the original five x-men coming together to keep charles xavier dream alive the idea of helping out mutants and teach them how to control their powers but to also have a day where humans and mutants can live together in harmony now when it came to x-factor they had this bright idea to pretend to be a group of humans who were mutant hunters who were helping Helping out the human race but in reality they were a group of mutants who was using that to find mutants that they can help and actually teach and so when it came to Cameron Hodge his main goal was to get the word out there to the world and matter of fact it was his idea that X Factor does the whole pretending to be a group of humans either way with him being their PR, he kept putting commercials out there that kind of spread the hatred towards the mutant race. And the idea of them trying to help out mutants kind of look bad on them because now they're known as a group of mutant hunters and more and more humans are beginning to hate the mutant race, all because of these commercials. Now, you also had X Factor realize that Cameron Hodge is up to something, which we already know what it is. He's part of a group better known as The Right, another group in Marvel Comics that is trying to get rid of the mutant race. Now, in our last video, he had tricked Cyclops into fighting Jean Grey. And even though Cyclops has no proof it was Cameron who had tricked him, Cyclops and the rest of X-Factor knows that they cannot trust him. Now they're wondering why in the world did he come back to their base? And it's all because of Angel's will. Because remember, in the few books we had to skip over, we had learned that Angel had committed suicide. And so because of that, it's about time for his will to be released to everyone who was close to him. And so when it comes to Cameron, he is hoping that in the will, he had received something from Angel that could possibly hurt X-Factor down the road. Now, while you have the different members of X-Factor getting ready to leave to go hear the will of Angel, we do see they're being watched by Cameron Hodge. Now, when it comes to Cameron Hodge, he was technically fired just a moment ago by X-Factor, but he's like, I'm not going to leave just yet. I want to stay here and continue to watch you guys. And so that is when he realized that they have hope in two things. One, in the will of Angel, they will see something that could possibly help them continue on X-Factor. And two, they also still have hope in the idea that humans and mutants can live together in harmony. And that last one right there really does bother Cameron a lot. He wants to make sure that dream never comes to life. And so he calls up somebody and tells that person it's time to go into Plan Beta. And we're left to wonder what in the world is Plan Beta? Now, on their way over to the courthouse, you do have our hero see a huge body of people standing outside the courthouse protesting. Now, this huge amount of people are really broken up into two groups. 
The first group is being led by a reporter known as Trish Gilby. Now when it comes to Trish, she really hates the idea that there are mutant hunters out there. She really loves the idea that mutants can live along with humans in harmony. But with the idea of mutant hunters being out there, she really hates X-Factor a lot. Now even though our heroes are pretending, they don't know that and so of course they're getting even more hatred now the other group hates x factor as well but for a completely different reason because you had the x factor team fight against the three horsemen of apocalypse but here's the thing when they're out there using their powers and wearing their mutant outfits they're not known as x factor they're known as x terminators and so with their battle against the four horsemen of apocalypse and central park and also causing a lot of damage you have this other group wondering where was x factor to stop x terminator not realizing that those two groups are really the same people. But either way, once you have our heroes get inside the actual courthouse to hear the will of Angel, we come to find out the only thing mentioned is that everything he has goes over to Cameron Hodge. The money, the entire Operation X Factor, it goes straight over to Cameron Hodge. And so Cameron won. And so if our heroes want to continue on with X Factor, they're going to have to work under the man they currently hate. And so when our heroes leave the courtroom and go outside the courthouse, they are confronted by Trish. Now here's the thing, Trish does inform our heroes that she got word that Cameron Hodge was somehow able to change how the will was supposed to go, which means that there is a possibility the will was not supposed to be give everything over to Cameron Hodge. Instead, most likely give it to somebody else possibly a member of X Factor like Cyclops or Jean Grey. But the problem is though, nobody knows the actual truth. But she also says that he was the one that had told the doctors to get rid of Angel Wings. Now, before X Factor is able to get more information out of her, Cameron Hodge walks outside a courthouse where you do have our heroes inform him that they are not going to work for him at all. If they're going to continue X Factor, they're going to do it in their own kind of way. Now, right after they say that, you didn't have Cameron tell his operatives to go ahead and begin Plan Beta. And we come to find out that Plan Beta is really more the idea of spreading more hatred towards the mutant race. And what I mean by that is, out of nowhere, you have a group of people wearing battle suits yelling out, death to the mutant hunters, death to X Factor. Because again, to the public, X Factor is a group of humans who are going out of their way to hunt down mutants. And so now you have these people wearing robotic suits but pretending to be mutants who had came here to kill off mutant hunters but in reality these are operatives who are working for Cameron Hodge either way because there's so much chaos most of the people there are not able to take a good look and see oh wait it's a guy in a robot suit. But because, again, there's so much chaos, they're like, oh my god, we're all being attacked by some random mutants. Now, you do have X Factor try their best to take down a few robots, but the problem is, though, they can't use their powers like they want to to help protect them and other innocent people in the area. And so they have no choice but to go ahead and disappear. And so they go hide in the sewers. But you have Cyclops tell Jean Grey, those guys were not mutants. They were regular people in robotic suits pretending to be mutants as a way to spread more hatred towards the mutant race. Because now they can say, look, mutants out of nowhere appeared and began to attack a random group of humans all because of some mutant hunters. That is not okay. Innocent people possibly got hurt or even worse, killed off.
But right after that attack is over, Cameron Hodge is able to be interviewed by Trish. And you have him continue the idea of spreading more hatred towards the mutant race by saying, look, this is another example of the idea of why mutants are so evil, why mutants should be killed off or locked away. Because look what they did. They came out of nowhere to attack a group of mutant hunters, but now innocent people who were just bystanders also got hurt as well this is not okay and that is why x factor is around to take care of the mutant race now while he was giving out that interview well he was being watched by no other than apocalypse and you have apocalypse just laughing because homeboy is getting ready to send out his four horsemen to do some damage to the human race especially his latest horseman which is death and we have no idea who that person is just yet but getting back over to the base of X Factor, we do pick up with the trainees. And remember, these were different characters that X Factor had saved and they were beginning the process of teaching them how to control their powers. But with that being said, they're back at the base watching TV and just saw what happened at the courthouse. But before they are able to actually react and have a conversation, well, more of those guys in robotic suits arrive at the base of X Factor to kill off their trainees because they are mutants. And so as we jump into the next chapter, we do pick up with our young heroes being attacked by the members of the right, the operatives working for Cameron Hodge. Now, here's the thing. Our young heroes, they're not trained for an event like this, but unfortunately, they have no choice here. If they want to survive, they're going to have to do what they can to survive. Now, when it comes to Richter, he's very important for this section. And the the reason why because Richter was captured by them in the past. When X Factor found Richter, they were freeing him from the right and those books we had to skip over. And so he knows the right very well. He knows what kind of torture they put mutants through. And so when it comes to our young heroes, they're trying to get away, but they can't. Now, you do have Caliban there as well. And when it comes to Caliban, he is one of the main team members, but unfortunately, he didn't go with the rest of them when it came to Angel's will. And the reason why, because of his body appearance. There's no way he can go out in the public and pretend that he is a human. Everyone would know right off the bat that he is a mutant. But with them being left behind at the base, it's technically up to him to help protect the young heroes. But he's taken out just like that. And this is very huge. And so we do see our heroes trying their best to make it back over to their base by using the sewers that can lead them back to their base. Except you have our heroes realize that everything happening to them is because of Cameron Hodge. He has been planning this for a very long time. And let's not forget that Trish, the reporter, she told Hank, aka Beast, what she kind of knew about Cameron Hodge. And so because of that, our heroes realized that when it came to Angel's will, Angel's wings, Angel's death, that was all being controlled by Cameron Hodge. The entire operation of X Factor is being controlled by Cameron Hodge. He did all of this as a way to build up more hatred towards the mutant race. And technically right now, he's winning and they have basically helped him to win. But getting back over to the base of X Factor, we do pick up with Boom Boom. Now, Boom Boom is one of those characters I just kind of like for unknown reasons. Like, no matter what, I'm going to read a book if she's in there because, honestly, she's a very funny kind of character. Either way, when it comes to Boom Boom, she has the ability to create small energy explosives to kind of use as a weapon against her enemies. Now, here's the thing. She was one of the few people that X Factor had saved and brought her over to be a trainee to kind of learn how to control her powers. But the thing was, she ran away. Matter of fact, she ran away and joined a team of characters known as the Fall 
fallen angels. Now that series had wrapped up by the time this book came out. And so it was about time to bring her back over to this series. Either way, when she tries to come back to X Factor to apologize for, well, running away, she realizes that one, she's having a hard time getting inside, but once she does get inside, she realizes the entire base is being controlled by different operatives of the right. And currently, they're taking away every single young mutant who was there at the base of X Factor. Now, they're not going to take away Caliban, but everyone else. Now, while she is hiding, she also hears where they are going. And apparently, they're heading over to Arlington. Now, we have no idea what that means for right now, but for her, it must be somewhere important. And so she sneaks onto the plane as the plane begins to fly off back towards Arlington, but the plane is also holding the young mutants that had just been kidnapped. But then you have the main X Factor team arrive at their base. And when they do, they realize the entire place is completely wrecked. But on top of that, the young mutants that they were taking care of have been kidnapped. And so they realize they must have been taken by the right. Now, they do find Caliban. He was left behind. And once our older heroes are able to wake him up, he tells them, listen, I was knocked out, but I slowly regained consciousness and I heard where they were going next. They're heading over to Arlington. Now, when it comes to Iceman, he realized what that could possibly mean. Arlington in Virginia. Now, guys, real quick. I'm going to tell you, when I saw the word Arlington, I thought they meant my state, Texas, because we do have a city in Texas known as Arlington, where the Dallas Cowboys play, but I was wrong. Either way, it does tell our heroes they need to head over to Virginia to hopefully find the young mutants that have been kidnapped. But after a few hours later, we do pick up with Boom Boom. Now, when it comes to Boom Boom, she does arrive in Arlington, Virginia after following the right for a good period of time. Now, she realized that they had arrived at some kind of museum. Now, this is a museum, so to the public, it may seem like a normal place, but in reality, it's also a secret base for the right in the back offices and so when it comes to boom boom she begins to walk around the place to hopefully gather enough intel about what is currently happening inside this building now while she is trying to do that well security realize who she is and they're kind of like hey she is a mutant and on top of that she was saved by x factor she's one of the ones that we were missing we have to go ahead and grab her right now. Except she tries to make a phone call back to New York to tell X Factor where to find her. But unfortunately, she has to run away because those few security guards are about to catch up on her. And so getting back over to the trainees of X Factor, well, you have the right beginning to torture them. And you have Richter inform the rest of the group what really happens when it comes to them being captured by the right. The right is planning on using mutants as weapons. And so what they try to do is torture you in different kind of ways to hopefully control you down the road to, again, use you as a weapon for their own personal gain. Now, real quickly, we do jump over to Apocalypse. Now, when it comes to Apocalypse, he's getting ready to send out the four horsemen. Now, let's not forget, he just got his fourth horseman, which is Death. And we have no idea who Death is, but apparently he wants to make sure that Death is ready by giving him a test. Now, when it comes to the other horsemen, they don't believe that Death is all that impressive because apparently the only ability he has is to fly. And so out of nowhere, you had his horsemen be able to clear the test with no problems at all. But we're still left to wonder who could possibly be the fourth horseman of Apocalypse. But then, getting back over to Boom Boom, she does see Richter is currently being tortured by the right. They are trying to turn him into a secret weapon, 
or just some kind of weapon to use against their enemies. Either way, you do have Boom Boom being able to actually save him by breaking him out of his torturing device. Now, why you have the two characters trying to get away? Well, unfortunately, they run into the leader of the entire operation, and that would be Cameron Hodge. Now, like I said earlier, though, we kind of already knew that he was part of the group. But now we know that he is actually the leader of the group. And so everything that has been going on with X-Factor was being done by him. Except a few things being done by Apocalypse. And so when we jump into the final chapter for today's video, we do pick up with X-Factor breaking into the actual base that belongs to the right. Now, while they are doing that, I kind of want to focus on Beast. And the reason why, because remember, Beast got really sick when it came to Pestilence touching him. And remember, Pestilence powers is to give you a random illness. Now, Beast has been able to recover, but apparently he's not able to think straight to the point where it seems like he no longer has an interest in science or possibly his mind is beginning to change into a animal state of mind. Either way, you do have our heroes continue on to hopefully find their trainees and get the heck out of there. And so when we jump over to Cameron Hodge, we see him still continuing to torture the trainees of X-Factor. Now, while doing that and hoping to turn them into weapons, well, that is the moment he realized his base is being attacked by X-Factor. Now, he's not worried. And the reason why? Because he planned this. He knew that sooner or later, X-Factor would come after for their trainees. And so now it's him saying, okay, you know, what make sure you guard this room but i'll make sure to handle x factor so that we are able to move on to the next part of our master plan now when it comes to x factor they run into a room that was specially made for them the room is made to contain them and their powers do not work inside of there now that is the moment where they are confronted by cameron hodge now when they do see cameron he tells them that he has been planning this for a very long time. Matter of fact, ever since college. Let me explain, because remember, the only reason why he was able to join X Factor as their PR is because he was close friends with Angel, but they were friends in college. But back in college, Angel wings were not developed yet, and so he looked like a human. But once Angel had gained his wings and came out as a mutant, well, that began his hatred towards the mutant race and so ever since then he has been plotting to hopefully get rid of the mutant race either way when it comes to the room that was specially made to contain x factor well they were able to break free and once they do that they continue on to hopefully find cameron but to also find their trainees as well but we have to jump back over to Apocalypse. And the reason why? Because this gives us our first appearance of Archangel. Yes, you heard that right, Archangel. This was the moment where the world found out that he was still alive. And when I say the world, I meant the real world, not the comic book world. Because again, we were told back in X Factor, I want to say number 14 or 15, that Angel had committed suicide. And so to all his friends, he was dead. But we come to find out Apocalypse had saved him and turned him into his fourth horseman, Death, Archangel. Now when it comes to Archangel, you right now have him fighting against the other horsemen to only see who is the strongest. And whoever is the strongest will become the leader of the group. Now, that battle right there does not take that long, where you have Angel being able to defeat the other horsemen so easily to prove that he should be the leader. And so the rest of the book really does focus more on X-Factor and their trainees fighting against the right. And so 
when we jump back over to them, we also kind of find out that Cameron Hodge is wearing a special kind of armor. And this armor protects him from Cyclops Optic Blast. Because when it comes to Cameron, he realized that if you take out Cyclops and Jean Grey, the rest of the X Factor team breaks apart. Like they can't function without those two members of the team. Which honestly is not completely true because of Iceman. And what I mean by that is you do have the right being able to put on some kind of belt that cancels out the powers of Iceman. Now when it comes to the belt, it was technically programmed to Iceman's original stats. But let's not forget, he disappeared from the book for a short period of time and jumped over to Thor books. And when he did, Thor and Loki, really just Loki, gave Iceman a power up. And so Iceman is even more powerful than he was about almost 10 issues ago. And so when it comes to Cameron, when he made that belt, it was made for Iceman's original power level, not his new power level. And so Iceman was able to break free and then break the armor that Cameron was using. And then you have Cyclops being able to give the finishing blow. Except the problem is though, when he does that, we kind of find out Cameron was never there. Well, he was in the building, but he wasn't there when it came to our heroes fighting against him. They were fighting against a robot. The real Cameron was able to get away and most likely trying to find a new way to attack X-Factor in the mutant race. But the day is saved. X-Factor is able to leave alongside with their trainees. Now, getting back over to Apocalypse, well, he was watching X-Factor the entire time, and he has been wondering how strong they truly are. Because again, let's not forget, when it comes to Apocalypse, he's really big on the idea that the weak deserves to die, and only the strong deserves to live. And so when it comes to Apocalypse, he was watching X-Factor the entire time, and he still feels like they need more tests to see how strong they truly are. And so he does tell his horsemen, get ready, it's time to fight against X-Factor. And so while X-Factor is wondering where they can go with their trainees, out of nowhere, they are teleported away over to what seems to be the base of Apocalypse. And this leads into the fall of the mutant story arc. And so with that being said, please leave me a like down below and subscribe. But guys, see y'all next time. Later.